Hello and welcome to Nerd vs. World, episode 42, The Meaning of Nerd. I'm Brendan. I'm Spindles. And I'm Sleepy. No, I'm AD. <laughs> and all the other gnomes. And all the other dwarves. Dwarves, <laughs> not gnomes. What? Sorry, fairy day, panels yeah. infecting my brain. <laughs> More about that later on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Both the fairy panels and the brain infections. Indeed. <laughs> um, so on today's, uh, well, on Let's this see. week's episode, uh, we'll be looking at... More of the versus world aspect of the show concepts. We're taking on the controversy surrounding the Hugo Awards and the Clean Reader app. Um, there'll also be a roundup of Easter Khan, mm-hmm. and there's an Australian Kickstarter with Susan from Neighbours, which we <laughs> think you should be supporting. <laughs> cool. So, what do you want to dive into first? Do you get the Easter Khan? Oh, right? Easter Khan first, yeah, because I guess the, the thing with the Hugos kind of comes out yeah. of that because they were they were kind of announced there. Um, okay, yeah, so, uh, yeah, at the very, very last minute, uh, we decided to go to EasterCon. It was, like, the Monday, which was the day that <coughs> you could, the last day you could essentially get tickets for it. Uh, so, yeah, I got in touch with the people down there, and it was kind of too late to get actual press passes and stuff. So we just bought membership, and then they gave us press ribbons anyway and organised so, everything, so that was cool. That's nice. Um because we had, we'd missed the deadline by quite some considerable margin it was back in March. Because Well, we just didn't think we were going to be able to make it because sure. it was so close to the Sci-Fi Weekend uh, and then the Sci-Fi Ball because essentially I've done like three in weekend-long row. cons in six weeks or something. Yeah. So that's why I'm kind of a bit battered because, again, we were going to come back after... We're going to come back kind of Sunday afternoon so that we could still have a day just to recover and get back into the swing of things again. But as it was, we ended up staying over on Sunday night as well. And then for most of Monday as well, I finally got back at some point last night. I was just like, uh, brain dead. So, um, yeah, uh, to Easter Con, yeah. Very, very different con to a lot of the other ones we've been doing recently. It, Easter Con seems to be well because it's part of the kind of world con brand it's it's yeah. a con that happens in a different place every year with a completely different committee organizing it um so there's no real kind of continuity of people who organize it what people do is they put together uh, a kind of list of guests of honor and and propose a place to do it and then bid for it and then it's all down to a vote who actually gets it on a yearly basis so every Easter there is an Easter con it can be called something completely different and be anywhere in the UK so for example next year is Mancunicon guess where that's going to be Bristol (laughs) 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 and it's obviously it's associated with the larger brand which is Worldcon which as I said last year was in London uh, which I just missed because we were at Nine Worlds the week before I think it was so we're just like no we can't do two cons in a weekend this year I might have a go <laughs> two cons in a weekend but obviously World Con is not in London this year um, so yeah it, it East Con seems to be a lot more uh, it, it's much more focused on on the writing side of things that so on, on literature rather than on kind of you know TV and films and and just kind of you know sci-fi and fandom in general um and it also seems to be the one that uh, a, a lot of authors attend in order just to you know meet up and network with other authors mm-hmm. and, and that kind of thing and do panels and workshops and things together in terms of you know how, how they go about writing and how people go about publishing and how to best do things like that. So it's about sharing best practice and stuff as okay. well. So yeah, it's it, and it's a, a massive program. Again, it's. Uh, similar to kind of Nine Worlds in the there is God knows how many tracks of things going on that there aren't it's not really official you know there's not a podcasting track and a movies track or anything like that there is there were just there were just different rooms where stuff happened Um, you just kind of had to keep an eye on the program as to what was actually going on Um, so the guests of honour this year were uh, Jim Butcher Oh, um, Dresden Files. Dresden Files yes. and, and the Codex Alera. Nice. Uh, uh, who is a, a thoroughly wonderful bloke and is a, a tabletop gamer and LARPer nice. and just all round nerd. He's a very, very cool bloke. Uh, and yeah, we recorded an interview with him that will be going out as a wonky cast in a couple of weeks' time. Uh, talking about 
yeah, Dresden Files, Codex Alera, and his his forthcoming new uh, steam opera that he's created. Sweet, Ooh, okay. that's a big name. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, uh, so there was him and Sean McGuire, uh, and she's uh, also a you know New York Times best-selling uh, urban fantasy author. Uh, again, she's brilliant. Uh, has a, a definite fascination for viruses, parasites, and things that will essentially we'll lay humanity to waste. <laughs> she gets very animated about them, and it's great. Her, her, her panel was brilliant because it was just her sat on stage. And she, there was nobody to interview her. She just went right. No, it's it. If you've seen an audience with uh, an evening with Kevin Smith, <laughs> it's like that. Only because it was pre-watershed, uh, she substituted all swear words with the names of Pokemon. <laughs> <laughs> that's cool. <laughs> that's, that's, that's actually pretty cool. <laughs> Which was pretty awesome. I'd like to hear that. <laughs> Uh, and then the other guest of honour, of course, was a, a friend of ours, Hair Doctor, Hair was there, who was the, the art guest of honour. Mm. Uh, and yeah, he was there showing off a load of his stuff and talking about how he makes everything and doing uh, various appearances on panels for those. Um, one of which was the first one. I basically started and finished the entire weekend with a panel with Hair Doctor. Because the first one when I got there was um, The Joy of Steampunk, because uh, we got there cool. a little bit late. So we missed the opening ceremony in the first couple. There was one on the Marvel Cinematic Universe that I unfortunately oh, okay. missed. Uh, I just missed the end of that one. So, yeah, didn't get there quite in time for it, which is a bit of a shame. Yeah. I was aiming for that, but traffic being what it was, etc., and sleeping in and things meant that you didn't get there quite in time. But yeah, the first one was, uh, it was a joy of steampunk, and it was um, Professor Elemental, Hair Doctor, Major Tinker, Dr. Jeff, and I forget the lady's name. She's the author of a, a, a webcomic 2D goggles. I, I can't remember her name, but I will root it out. I got an excellent picture of her drinking beer. <laughs> uh, and yeah, I'll, I'll pop that in the, in the show notes. But yeah, that, that was a great panel to kind of kick things off. It was nice and light-hearted and cool. just talking about you know, why steampunk is a joyous affair. Um, also on Friday, what do we have? Yeah, there was the Ultimate Urban Fantasy panel, which was uh, Jim Butcher, Sean Maguire, uh, Charles Stross was there. He was very, very cool. Uh, Charles Stross is one that, I can't remember, was, you know, it was a friend of mine lent me, uh, was it Altered State? The the one about the uh, heist in an MMORPG. Mm. Oh, yeah, yeah. I've, I've... Yeah. yeah, I have heard of that. Uh, but he also writes an, an urban fantasy series as well. Uh, and so yeah, that that was that was a great panel again, all talking about urban fantasy. And that was the yeah the first one of Jim Butchers, who was suffering very very badly from jet lag and lack of sleep at that point. Apparently, it took him thirty six hours to get there, so thirty six hours without sleep, being stuck on stage to doing to do a panel. He bore up remarkably well. Perfect. Um, what else do we have on the Friday night? Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, Professor Elemental did a show. Uh, and then there was a, a wonderful thing called the Dark Room, uh, which it was a interactive text adventure. So there was a, it's a, he's an Australian New Zealand comedian, uh, and basically he has he's got it all hooked up so that on stage it says you awake to find yourself in a dark room. That's how it starts, and you've got a bunch of uh, options that are go north, find light switch. It's, it's basically an interactive comedy act where he get picks a person in the audience and gets them to choose the options. Right. And then he does that, and it, it, you, it's basically to see how long people can survive for it. I'm not sure if there is actually a way of winning it because nobody did actually win it. Uh, but it, <laughs> it was very, very funny. Uh, I had a chat with him afterwards. Uh, he's doing more shows down at the, the Udderbelly. Yeah. In London, um, okay, I was going to say which one. <laughs> yeah, where where the um, festival of spoken nerd guys were doing stuff, uh, but yeah, it was hilarious. Very very funny guy, uh, and a, a very interesting concept. I think it was either either an Xbox or a PlayStation that he had hooked up just with a controller. So he he built a kind of harness that had the controller in front of him and a big LED torch that just shone <laughs> up in his face. So he was doing the, the kind of talking of what happened and improving it around it as well. It was it was really, really good. So I, I would thoroughly re recommend anybody to go and see that if they get the chance. Yeah, The Dark Room, Okay, it was called. Um, 
so that was the kind of stuff I got through on Friday. There was uh, tons more that I missed because there were, let me just have a look, there was one, two, three, four, five, six main rooms where stuff is happening. Uh, and then there's all the kind of author rooms and things and all the traders. And then there was a screening room, a games room, a costumes room, an art room. So the, there was an immense amount of stuff. And I don't think even by the end of the weekend we managed to get around to seeing everything. Right. Um, so yeah, without going kind of blow by blow for the rest of the weekend, more panels <laughs> on Saturday. Um, yeah, more excellent ones. Uh, highlights of Saturday were probably... Uh, Shauna Maguire was very, very funny when she did hers. Um, oh, yeah, Saturday afternoon there, there was a, a zombie panel um, that had uh, Jim Butcher, uh, Charles Stross, uh, and a couple of other people. It was Charles Stross was. I don't know. This was a, it was the vampires panel rather than the zombies panel. Sorry. <laughs> Uh, yeah, there's two so many different. There was panels on zombies, vampires, fairies, all sorts of stuff over the weekend. Um, but it was talking about vampires, and Charles Stross started explaining about hippo ass worms. <laughs> hippo, you... hippo ass worms. Yes, worms that live in the ass of a hippo. <laughs> <laughs> parasites and are essentially vampires um, Charles Stross was just sat there explaining all about hippo ass, <laughs> ass worms and the rest of the panel are just going ew <laughs> uh, that, was a, that was an absolute highlight Really? That was one of my big takeaway moments of the weekend and I did get pictures of it there's just pictures of, of just Charles Stross has this look of utter glee on his face as he's explaining it. And there's a Jim Butcher and the other people are just out there going, Ooh. <laughs> uh, Yeah, uh, other stuff. So, yeah, on the, on the Saturday, what else was there? I don't know. There was just panels on everything. I mean, there was panels on, on the physics of starships. There was panels on quintic equations. Um, oh, yeah, I saw something about maths and, like... Suicide. Yeah, quintic <laughs> equations uh, and tragedy. It's all about you know, mathematicians who got mad, died young, caught tuberculosis, and yeah, it, it's basically like horrible histories with equations. Wow. <laughs> um, okay. Yeah. Uh, there was you know, psychology of Doctor Who. There was yeah, just you know, panels on absolutely everything. Right. Uh, so it, whether you wanted to just be entertained by stuff, learn stuff take part in stuff that was build your own Daleks and there was all all manner of stuff going on. So, yeah, very, very busy convention with lots and lots to do. That's pretty cool. Across the whole of the hotel. They had a real ale bar. They had, you know, the normal bar. So they basically bought in a whole bunch of barrels of real ale and just set that up in a corridor. So they had a real ale bar for the entire weekend. So yeah. that kind of gives you an idea of the, the people were there. It was um, it's probably a much... A much older age group than a lot of the other cons. Yeah. I think that, that's why you know they're, they're they're trying to kind of put on different authors that uh, that are appealing to slightly younger crowds as well. So they're doing a lot of the urban fantasy and 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 some YA fiction and things like that just to try and bring in a new generation of people as well. Uh, yeah, so yeah, a thoroughly enjoyable weekend. Um, and uh, obviously there was the the announcement. On the Saturday night of the the, the Hugos, yeah, um, which sparked up a bit of controversy, and then on, on the Sunday we went to what we thought was being going to be a Game of Thrones panel, and it turned out to be a what the hell do we do about the Hugos panel? Uh, it had been changed slightly, so there was a, a big discussion in the room there between kind of you know people who were on the chair for on the, on the panel committee for Worldcon and stuff, and yeah. a bunch of authors just trying to get their points across about the debacle that is the this year's Hugo Award slate. Yeah, the whole sad puppies fiasco. Sad and rabid puppies, yeah. yeah so, uh, I don't know, I, I guess for the for the uninitiated, we should probably just kind of talk through a bit about what, what's happened. Yeah, okay. Do you want to take any kind of lead on this, or do you want me just to... Oh, essentially... <clears throat> essentially, it's the, the literary equivalent now of... Gamergate. It is, yeah, and well, and uh, and it now involves Gamergate, Gamergate yeah, as well. Obviously, 
any any chance that they get to be misogynistic and bigoted and is, basically try and pressure people and yeah. threaten and is, is control and influence is, is yeah. a chance that those fucking bottom feeders can't miss yeah so they're just getting stuck in but yeah it was a response to last year's awards seeing a notable number of female and minority winners yeah um, and so in response to that it was a group set by Brad Torgerson and Larry Correa yep called Sad Puppies um, and the campaign was to ensure that all the nominees in all the categories fit their personal belief of what a sci-fi writer should be uh, and, and what what good science fiction but, yeah. is. I think their 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 key thing is that these awards. You see, it's one, it's one of those things that on the surface of it, when you very first look at it, it looks like a bunch of people who are going. We think that commercial sci-fi should be popular at award ceremonies, and then you scratch below the surface of that, and it's more. Then it becomes more like uh, we don't want women winning awards we don't want anybody of any different ethnicity winning awards people with disabilities anything like that we don't want them winning awards we just want good solid white White male male middle class oriented sci-fi yeah and and but that's the thing with with all of these groups the gaming gate thing and now this and it's been in the film industry music industry as well and it's wrong on so many levels but the quote that I've got for Torgerson, his his reason for why he did this, is he said that in the last decade, we've seen the Hugo skew ideological, as Worldcon and fandom alike have tended to use the Hugos as an affirmative action award. He then goes on to say that books are selected because of the right of being a, a woman or a minority, or a character being a woman or a minority. His, his exact quote is an affirmative action award giving Hugo's because a writer or artist is insert underrepresented minority yeah. or victim group here or because given work features insert underrepresented minority or victim group here characters. The guy's an ass. And it's not just them, there's the other guy which is Theodore Beale uh, whose pen name is Vox Day. Did you come across him in your I didn't research? Come across him in my research right, no. He's the one that's responsible for the rabid puppy okay. slate. I, 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 to be honest, I didn't get to rabid puppy slate because reading the sad puppy stuff left me frustrated. If that made was. you angry enough, this would have made you murderous. This guy Vox Day. Uh, not only has he basically put all of his own stuff on all the slates, he runs his own. He runs a press, and he basically has put all novels from his own press on there including himself in various different categories uh, he's on the nomination for best editor and a couple of other things and he is kind of one of the ringleaders behind this as well and potentially he's one of the ones who actually is putting a lot of the money behind this that has allowed the vote rigging to take place uh, it's, well, uh, vote rigging is kind of ballot rigging they're gaming the system yeah Vote, vote rigging implies that something illegal with a uh, yeah, no, yeah, no, the Yeah, no, no, no. It, it's gaming the system. Yeah. They're, they're, they're playing within the rules, but arguably against the spirit of the yeah, thing. Yeah, it's, it's as uh, Chuck Wendig said, it, it's like min maxing a character in D&D. Absolutely. It's yeah. legitimate as a, as, a, as a play style, but you're yeah. probably a douchebag. It's, yeah, it's like Flandry <laughs> characters in Champions or yeah. whatever, where you put a bunch of disads on a power so you can get it really high with a bunch of disads for fuck all cost. Yeah. So it's something we we all do in role playing, but in in, in award ceremonies, it's at the very least frowned upon. Yeah. And the issue is now that what what they've done is through block voting, there's these two lists of of titles and authors that these guys have put forward and have gotten a percentage of people involved in the voting process to vote off to make sure that their ballots have ended up in the top selections. Well, that's the thing. Apart from best novel, all the nominees are sad puppies approved. Yes. For uh, every category. Well, it's got, it's, it's, it's the, the, I think it's the best graphic novel is the one that has absolutely none of them off any of the list. Right. Um, there's... Uh, bear with me while I just get my lists of them because it's, it's... I think it's useful at this point to say that 
all you need to do in order to vote is be a paid member, which is 40, 40 quid. Uh, well, it's $35 to be a supporting member, yeah. and that gives you the right to, to vote, to vote and, and to put forward nominations. Yeah. So, uh, and, and the, the entire voting pool is made up of something like 10,000 people. That's the entire eligible voting mass of people from Worldcon uh, and members of Worldcon. So in order to influence that vote, you only need a small percentage of that. Uh, and it looks to be somewhere in the region of around 300 people who have been involved in this block voting yeah. uh, and voted off the sad puppies and, and the rabbit puppies lists. Um, so ones that nominees appearing on, not appearing on either list, there's two from the best novel category that weren't on either of the lists. Best graphic story is the one that is completely puppy free. Uh, there are a couple on dramatic presentation long form being Captain America Winter Soldier and Edge of Tomorrow. Uh, a dramatic presentation short form which is Doctor Who Listen. Right, hang on. So, so from Black. Captain America wasn't on a puppy's list. Wasn't on either of them. So no. Guardians of the Galaxy was. Yes, Guardians of the Galaxy was. Which is ridiculous yes it is they go on later in their diatribe to slate mcu yes and but they also say that uh it's it's the commercial stuff that should be winning and they cite avengers which won two years ago <laughs> so it's it's a whole mass of contradictions and essentially it, it boils down to the fact that they they want to have a stranglehold uh on these awards to force people out. Now, I don't even think it's necessarily about them winning, although I think that would be great for their, yeah. their kind of kudos and, and self-inflation, but I think it's more about keeping other works out of it. But the fallout from this now has been a whole um, no winner or no vote registered. Yes, thing. it's the no award. The no award. Because the, the way the voting works is on the voting you rank people in order of preference so it's an alternative vote rather than just being you vote for one person the highest of those wins you rank them according to how well you think they do and then there is a no award vote and if you put in the no award vote above all of the other authors then that means that no award is given in that category because the membership believe that none of them are worthy of winning that award so there is a way that the voters can rail against this by putting no award no for the stuff that is on the rabbit puppies and the, the sad puppies lists. The problem with that and the irony of the whole situation is that there's probably one or two authors and one or two pieces they of legitimate work and, that yeah. do deserve an award. The other side, I mean, there's like Jim Butcher is on that list. Uh, he was there, he was guest of honour <laughs> this weekend. And, you know, it, it comes to the point where... The, the, the responses to it are a lot of people are I will no award everything that's on these lists and that then becomes unfair to the authors who had nothing to do with it. Yeah. So that's the kind of situation and I guess it's just to kind of bandy about what can be done about it both this year and in years to come. Well, it's been pointed out that the voting is always been a political system it's just become more overtly so this year with this concerted effort by the sad puppies group um i don't know a way around it because the only way they the, the, oh, no ways around it might be to have specific awards for the category of writers that sad puppies are trying to push out but that segregates yeah that again. doesn't actually yeah. help much at all because they shouldn't be considered as a separate part of the whole community they have every right to be considered as part of the community en masse mm. so giving them their own category doesn't solve the problem at all yeah. no it won't because it's not just that they want to win they want to actively stop female writers and different di writers of different different ethnicities from producing material as far as they're concerned, that's tainting the genre. The thing that makes me so fucking livid about this sort of bullshit is that science fiction and fantasy 
ideals. Whilst people sometimes go for dystopian slants in their work, more often than not, you can imagine a future of a harmonised, civilised society with any possibility. And yet there are still people who can accept that in their fiction, but not in their fact. But, I mean, again, even their fiction they want to take to the extremes. Essentially what they're after is the the muscle-bound hero stalking off into space, killing aliens with a books and wench at his side. That's the kind of thing that they're proposing is the right way to write science fiction. John Campbell would be spinning in his it, fucking It is grain. a way, but not the way. Indeed. And, uh, you know, to there is a place for it. Just you know, Well, of course, yeah. It's, 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 it's fiction. End, People can write whatever yeah. they want. But to be then saying, no, you can't write what you write. And, you know, it's, it, it's devolved into yeah. you know, You're full, not on, a female full on personal attacks from this Vox Day asshole. To people, yeah. it's it's it, it's just unthinkable, and it's it it's using all exactly the same tactics as Gamergate of anybody who comes up and says, "Hey, you're a bit wrong." They will shout down, and they yeah. will shout down, and they will threaten and throw it's money just, at shutting you down. It's yeah. just fucking uh, I, uh, it, it beggars belief, and there is just uh, I see no obvious solution. To how to stop no, these assholes. Well, the thing is, though, it will tumble into a, a tit for tat type thing, and it'll end up segregating the whole affair of it anyway. Yeah, well, that's, it, it's, and, it's and doing that's, it. Yeah. They're, they're oh, no, it's doing it. Oh no, I know, but the the only solutions will cascade it further. They basically than, fuck like, the entire thing because yeah. even the people who win. From, that had nothing to do with these. Yes, are going to be. They have a taint. They have a taint of the war. Yes, yeah, yeah. 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 It's just, you know, they've, essentially this year they, they've won, they've got their point across, they've fucked the entire thing up. But they're also missing the ironic point that they, they're putting so much emphasis on their, sort of their integrity and prestige of these awards and they've just destroyed that. But they're never the going to get the idea because they're right-wing extremist maniacs. And I just, I, I see no way to effectively combat back to these people because they're just, they're, there is no, they're, you can't talk sense to them. You cannot logically no. explain something and go, this is this, this is that. And they'll go, oh yeah. I'm going to see your point. <laughs> <laughs> that, 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 that will just never I've fucking been, occur. I've been wrong all my life. <laughs> yeah, no. yeah, that's it. Oh yes, I'll burn my Bible now. <laughs> no. Go back to reading nice stuff. It's just, I, I just don't see... The easy, I think somebody suggested uh, as a way as a way to fight back that uh, people write a whole bunch of slash fiction featuring them and then get that on the card next year and <laughs> nominate that and get the, that to win. Uh, it is essentially frightened white men hiding behind any reason to be a douchebag to women and minorities. Yeah. Um, and there's no justification for that. And there's no way you can talk to their fear, which is essentially the problem. It's a fear. Of is it, or is it just douchebaggery? No, I, 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 I think, think it's no, no, fear. No, it's, I, th I think, I think to a to a to a degree, it's fear. They have been set in this world where all the stuff they're used to, or have grown up with, or have been part of, has been very regimented, and now with society and tech changing they're being exposed to new ideas which are catching on because people are generally progressive and people generally aren't dickheads apart from this minority and they don't like the change and I think it is fear to an extent that drives them to be assholes because it's, a, it's, a, it's an instinctive response and they can't put their finger on why they have to be a dick but they know it's because this is different to what I like and that's the problem that's the problem with game again the whole Gamergate thing was a woman wrote a computer game. I think her name was Zoe Quinn. She wrote this game. It got generally pretty good reviews from critics. It got a Steam distribution deal. And they were just like, no, don't like it. They couldn't figure out why. But they were like, maybe because it's, she's a woman. We just don't like it. Then it came out that she did have a relationship with a Kotaku um, reporter. Mm -hmm. Then these guys latched onto that. And were like, there you go. 
that's why I got good reviews. She was dating a reporter. Let's have ethics and video game journalism. Um, although at no point during their relationship did he write about any of her stuff. But these guys just latched onto it. It was fear made them latch onto it. Fear and fucking ignorance. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> No, you, so, you, you can't really say anything more than that, no, really, can you? Fear and ignorance. Can you imagine how much of a tirade this would have been if I'd read rabbit puppies now? <laughs> well, uh, as I say, if you'd have gotten on to Box Day and stuff afterwards, it just when you after this, have a read about him, man. He's he's oh. something else, dude. But it just makes me it makes me sad. Yeah, because I love our community. Generally, I've I've generally had no problems, but that might be because I'm a. I'm a white man, you know, so I've never experienced um, issues within my community for what I like. Mm. I have when I was a kid, because kids get bullied for liking different things, and I got bullied for liking Doctor Who or for liking Star Trek, so I've experienced that, but nothing to the extent that these guys are subjecting people to now. Mm. I mean, it's just unconscionable. So, well, what are your thoughts on on what can be done about the voting this year? Because there are several trains of thought. You can either a flat out ignore anything that's on the lists and vote for the other stuff on their merits, uh, ignore the lists, read everything because they all get put out in the voters pack. You get to read them, judge them all on their own artistic merits, and then vote. Yeah. Or do you? take into account the stuff that is on the list and then I, I, I don't know have that ignore as, as it. Some, well no not ignore it but yeah have, have some kind of handicap process for that that only if it's actually particularly good, good do you then actually put it because it's all about kind of where you place this no award thing um, in the voting in, in terms of you know what rankings you give things anything below no award is, is not counted. Yeah. Well, I'd say completely ignore the list, read all the material, and then see where it fits within the list. And if you agree with it, then you vote in the correct manner. I, I, yeah, because I guess the problem with judging everything on, it, on, its, <laughs> on its merits, as it were, is, yeah, it might be that in some of, the, some of the categories where it's all stuff off this r- sad and rabid puppies list... None of it is particularly good enough to win a Hugo on its own artistic Fair. merits, but if you've got nothing else to compare it against and you're only comparing artistic merit based on these five things in that category, you will go, well, that's the best out of the bunch. Yeah. But does it deserve a Hugo? Indeed. And I guess then you have to kind of look at comparing it to works in the same category over previous years. And that's why to get there, there an needs idea. to be perhaps a secondary, not a award per se, but a, a mention saying it was not good enough. Nobody was in this category was good enough for a Hugo. However, the best of this category was. So a, a mention, but without award. Yeah. But I mean, does that then still give, you know, unfair press and attention and exposure to stuff that shouldn't have been on the fucking list in the first place? Well, perhaps, but it's yeah. a, it's a it's nice, a really it's fucking a, tricky yeah, situation. It's, a, it's it's a nice kind of compromise in that way, though. It's it's a kind it, of. But it's yeah. not great that it has to happen. I think it's but you know it, it's being fairer. It's a workable than, compromise. Than these fuckers deserve. Yeah, yeah, but it's a workable compromise that <laughs> yeah. would be acceptable. Yeah, that's what I'm working at. Is it's fucked. It's just a bitter just, fucking pill to swallow, it, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it, it's fucked. But let's you know. It's like putting a sticky plaster on a fucking burst water main. Yeah, but yeah, totally. Still, yeah, you know, it's gonna mend it for a little. You know, I think there needs to be a revamp going forward, though. This year, I have to. I think they have to accept that no matter what they do, it's all gonna be tainted. Sad, uh, sad puppies will find a way of spinning it as press for yeah. them. Yeah. So and they, they will. They, they will strike it as a blow yeah. for their ideology. Yeah. Well, however, it plays out, they're going to come out of it saying they've won. Because if they if all the no award stuff happens, they're going to go. Oh, it's just sour grapes from a bunch of you know yeah. left wing idealists. Progressive. Yeah. Um, but I think moving forward, they might have to change their approach because I don't think you can actually have a meritocracy if you have paid votes. No, no, you can't. Because uh, 
you know, it, they have to do something about the block voting stuff because otherwise it's just going to happen again and it's going to be there's going to be more and more of these slates turn up every year and it's going to be block votes versus block votes rather yes. than individual people yeah yeah it's going to be sides of an argument yeah, yeah 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 totally yeah because even if you know if you know the other side of the debate goes well here's an alternative list that's still doing the same thing yeah and you can't have cultural development and evolution and growth yeah if you're picking a side in a cultural argument yeah um, but well, it's tricky as fuck I mean I, 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 I have no idea but then if you how get, I'd f- fix this if you get the said list and then the alternative list get the top of both put them together and then the winner of the top of both of them gets the fucking but no the, the lists don't actually the, the lists are not what are voted on they're basically a bunch of suggestions. Yes, I know. Yeah, but that's what I mean. But they're it's suggestions for people who are not affiliated with it, yeah. and then it's the members that vote on those things. Because the votes could come from anywhere. Any exactly. person who is a member can say, I've read this bit of short fiction, be it in an ebook, be it in a periodical, be it online, and say, I think this is worthy of a Hugo. And if enough people say, I think this is worth a Hugo, then it will get on the shortlist. Which is why, you know, you have a self-published novel on there from some guy who, you know, has never had anything anywhere near on a Hugo list before. Because yeah. he was on these sad and rabid puppies lists. It's all fucked. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, I, guess I don't have an obvious solution for it. There are a whole bunch of possibles and I would kind of put it to anybody listening to this to have a think about it yeah. and have a debate about it and see what you guys can come up with because it's... It's Something has to be done, and I don't know what. <coughs> yeah, it's a tricky one. Steps down. That's fine. <laughs> yeah, go pick your soapbox anyway. Yeah, that's, that's your soapbox. I'm away. Yeah, it's totally fine. I'm keeping mine a little bit longer. Carry just, on. Just a tiny bit longer, um, because the other thing was the whole clean reader app oh god yes yeah 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 because there, there was a lot of talk about that over the weekend as well okay so for those who might have missed this because it was a fairly short lived thing I think but still worthy of discussion uh, there's an app developed by an Iowa couple I believe yeah that scans your ebooks and replaces profanity in the ebooks with uh, a printed selection of words that they have decided are acceptable. And there are different levels of uh, filter, which is irrelevant because any kind of filter at all defies and denies authorial consent and is just fucking wrong. Yep. That's basically my standpoint on the whole thing. I just don't see the point. It's like you either like it or you don't like it. If you don't like it, don't fucking read it. Well, the it. point is control. The it's point, it's yeah, like control. all the rest yeah, of it. Yeah. It's, oh, oh, no, but it's just like... It's a pointless fucking app for stupid people. It's, it's, it's an app for people who don't want to come across profanity in their lives then at don't any read point. read books that may contain it. Yeah, I know. Read, read fucking school books. Yeah. Stick to your... Stick to your... And yes, I did say that on purpose. Simple words. <laughs> um... Stick to Peter and Jane had a ball. What are your thoughts on it? (laughs) I vehemently disagree with it in principle and and in in all ways, shapes and forms. Um, And selective censorship. I don't think it can be legal. Because it is altering someone's work, ah, which yes, it comes yes. under copyright. It does, yes. And plagiarism. Ooh. It's, no, it's not plagiarism. It's, not plagiarism. it's, yeah. it's modification of a work without yeah. permission or consent of the author. Yeah. Fair. So it's the kind of thing that authors, if they want to, by all means opt in. And people who are using the app, absolutely fine. But the sure. authors should be able to provide the alternative words. Absolutely. That's yeah. the key thing. Yeah. Yes. If they want it, but there's the yeah. issue of authenticity in art, and when a, when an author writes a book, they have specific vision of how that story is told. Yep. Yes. And it doesn't allow for people to change the way the story is told by altering words. Yeah. Just because they disagree with the use of profanity, and I'm sorry, this is the fucking real world. 
people swear. Yeah. I listened to this show when I realised how fucking much I swear in a single episode, <laughs> and it's gone up today because I'm livid. Oh, about yeah, the, the, yeah. the but, swear boxes coffers are full <laughs> after this one. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I can get myself some food later. <laughs> <laughs> but it's just puritanical, and I would, uh, yeah, I'm with you. I'm vehemently opposed to it in principle. Yeah, but I, I think that was a good point, though. If people do want to have the option of alternatives, I think absolutely right. If the authors agree with it they should put the, well, the alternative would have in to it. opt in yeah. and yes. then have yeah, some, absolutely. some kind but of but if they don't control. opt in I don't think that they should be allowed to have that change they go no I do not want my book in this to do with this app Fuck yeah, you. I say it, it, it has but to be yeah. illegal that, that, that there cannot be a it's way done without their consent. that they are publishing <laughs> authors works and modifying them without consent they just should, they, they, there is no way yeah. they can do it so I just don't understand how they have <laughs> Some fucking random legal loophole somewhere along the line. Because no, the app's downloaded by an individual. In America, it, it'll be something to do with free speech yeah. because they've gone, ah, yeah. oh, it's our right to be able to do this and remove all profanity from it. Yes, I have the right to because not it's have an profanity individual. in my face. Because the, the you app, have the right to fuck off. <laughs> it's because the, the, the app is down to the person to who reads the book so it's not it's their personal copy they've paid for that copy if they want to exchange it for that no that's, that's no. No. no 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 because no. someone has designed this app yeah. someone's designed this app they've, they've they said this app will scan your book it will change profanity and that that in itself whether they bought the book or not they, they might they don't, need, they don't have to buy a book in order to make that app as a program yeah. that's just wrong Hmm. Making something that will go through and scan any ebook that's sold and change profanity is just wrong on the issues of that it challenges authenticity and it challenges authorial consent. Yeah. And there's 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 no way around that. There's no I mean there probably isn't people they've exploited, but there shouldn't be. Yeah. It it just shouldn't be allowed. Um and if they say things like, Okay, we have radio edits of songs that that's that's probably an argument yeah, they're gonna bring up. But that's public, because the the band will often be told if you want this as a single you'll have yeah. to make radio edit and they still have control over it so it's still an they authentic do. piece yeah, of work because you get work. people like Kid Rock who make yeah. the radio edits of songs and they're, yeah. they're awesome <laughs> I love Kid Rock's radio edits it's because they maintain authenticity by being the publisher and the creator of that content yeah. they don't let the radio station decide decide which words to switch out True. when they play so that's that's what's wrong but I, I don't really think that that's a workable solution for this no. unless the authors I, I think the, the only solution for it is for it to be a standalone app that is connected to a, an online library of ebooks that are supplied by an author with their consent have been modified in accordance with their wishes yeah. or and don't then, contain profanities to start with or, or don't contain profanities to start with yeah, yeah. Uh, that and that, have that as a data bank and have the app. No, even, so even, then, then, if, if, even then I think that even if it doesn't contain profanity at all I still think the author should be have to opt in yeah. because opting in essentially is agreeing with that service. Yeah. And you know, there are lots of authors who may not swear in their works but may not agree that other people's works need to be changed. Yeah. So I kinda of think, yeah, fine if it's an if it's a library that authors are self submitting, doing their own things, changing them themselves, putting them on that platform, that's fine. But not Modifying existing works. No, it's just wrong. Are we off soapboxes now? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, go on. Fuck it. A bit of levity then. Kickstarter. Kickstarter. Yeah, we, we, we got a message <laughs> through on the Nerd vs. World page, which is out of nowhere and that looks quite cool. Uh, now, as of recording, there's only 18 days to go before this closes. Uh, so when it goes out on Friday, there'll be even less. So it's like fourteen days. So you have two weeks to get up and and back. Night Terrace season two, which is a sci-fi comedy audio drama with Jackie Woodburn, who's Susan from Neighbours. <laughs> it it sounds pretty cool actually. So yeah, go go. We'll put links to it in the in the Kickstarter in the Kickstarter in the show notes to the Kickstarter. And you can go and have a look. And I think there's, <laughs> there's links in there for some of the season one stuff. It's uh, 
yeah, full cast science fiction comedy audio series. Uh, people behind Splendid Chaps, ABC One's Outland, and the Bazoora Project, whatever that is. No idea. Nope. nope never never that one. Um, but yeah, season one was done last year with the support of 300 Kickstarter backers, and they want to make season two. Cool. Let's, so, uh, let's yeah. help them make it. Yes, there is a yeah, Night Terrace episode one is, is on the, the front page of it, and it looks like it's on SoundCloud, so you can have a listen to it on there and decide if you want to back it and, and have more of it. Cool, cool, cool. Cool. So that's pretty awesome. And then, I guess to finish off, we just have the announcement of the winner. Competition winner. Oh, uh, but before that, oh. we should also say that um, I did get retweeted by Nathan Fillion. Uh, <laughs> just <laughs> as a side, hey, just hey as, folks, I got retweeted as, as by Nathan side, Fillion. Yeah. I don't know if I've mentioned that yet. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I've mentioned that on Twitter or Facebook enough yet. I don't think he's stopped smiling ever since. <laughs> I yeah, think his phone turned, he hasn't stopped buzzing. How many yeah. is it up to now? Is it uh-huh. in the thousands yet? Over 2,000 favourites. 2,000 favourites. Um, if you haven't seen the legendary <laughs> tweet, again, we will... Go and find it. I, will, I know, I'll put a link to it in the show notes again. <laughs> yeah. And then people can see it in all its glory. Awesome. In all Love its it. Nathan Fillion retweeted gloriness. Oh... Uh. I was such a fucking happy nerd. I had such a bad day as well. My master's dissertation proposal had just been refused. <laughs> but I got that. I was like, fine. <laughs> That's fine. okay. I don't care. Okay. Screw the dissertation. <laughs> Nathan <laughs> Fillion. <laughs> uh, yeah. And other other good news as well. It's in, well, certainly from my side of the fence, is my, my book is out. Yes. With my short story in it. Mm. Go buy it. Go buy it. It's, it's £2.35 if you buy the, the e-book version. Two pounds thirty-five for a whole bunch of short stories, one of which is mine. Nice. <laughs> so go buy it, read it, let me know what you think. But don't if you don't like it, then no, no that's fine. If you don't like it, tell me yeah. anyway. Let's shit, see if we can vote that for a Hugo next year. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, <laughs> nominate me for a Hugo. Yeah. <laughs> cool. So and then okay, so the winner of our competition. Yes. Yes, so, so giving away the, the thing that we won. The, the, the thing, the thing what, what the, we won. The thing what we won at the sci-fi weekend. <laughs> the, the wow thing what we won. Uh, like, <laughs> none of us could decide short of a Mad Max Thunderdome battle to the death. I was thinking more rotating plinth and spikes like Flash Gordon. Yeah. Uh, well, to be honest, we could decide on the method of fighting to the death. It was the it, well, it, it was, was the, more it was, the practicalities oh, yeah. of arranging it. Or, or by throbbing <laughs> scorpion crab it, thing. By it was, it was, it was the warrior names and the sort of leotard colours we couldn't decide on. Yeah, really. yeah. So we thought better just to give it away. I could so, decide thong or shorts. That was my yeah, quandary. Yeah, I know. That was, that was all of our quandaries. <laughs> that's, that's not, that's like, okay, so uh, at Oxgoth. Yep. Uh, you are our winner for Invasion of the Nerd Snatchers. So, yes, that, that will be the our next episode. Of episode 43. And it will be wowing its way towards you. There were some really good entries, to be fair. There, there were. Like, notable mentions, I think, had to go to... Um, Earth Girls and Nerdy. Earth Girls and Nerdy. Nerdy. That yeah, was, that that was, was a, good. a good one. Um, what else did we have that, that came in quite close? The Nerd um, Samurai was also a fun one. Nerd Samurai. Um, the Nerd Before Time. That was it. Nerd, nerd, nerd Before Time. Before yeah, time. That was... Yeah. That was but yeah, Invasion of the Nerd Snatchers is the winner. You have the dubious mm-hmm. honour of having an episode named after you. <laughs> episode 43 will be your, your, your episode. And a box and of, a box of Warcraft Warlords of Truth will yeah. be coming your way. It's a fucking sweet box set. It's it a pretty awesome box set. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. Do, do enjoy. Yes, have fun with that. Uh, yeah, okay. So, yeah. I think that is definitely it. I guess, the, yeah, that's pretty much it. Yeah. it. Just as, as per usual, keep an eye out on the site because I've been adding a ton of stuff to it again. There's events, uh, event stuff going on there where you can now kind of RSVP to events and then get your own event calendars on there. And then I'll be adding stuff to allow you to review events that people have been to. So it kind of builds up more of a, a crowd perspective of events that are going on. Sweet. So, yeah, all of that. As, just, as soon as you finish listening to this episode, you're going to go on to Netflix and then mainline Daredevil. Absolutely, go and watch the hell out, out of actually. Daredevil, because mm. we certainly we will. will be. Yeah. <laughs> oh yes, and undoubtedly that will be forming a large part <laughs> of our next show. show. Yeah, undoubtedly. <laughs> cool. And then of course, yeah, Game of Thrones is back soon as well. Sunday. Yeah, and, mm. and we're only weeks mm. off Age of Ultron. I know. It's all happening at once. I know. It's so good. There'll be nerdgasms for weeks. And I'm actually. I'm 
working on a science fiction sheet as well. <laughs> oh, that's the thing as well. Um, I might be adding uh, sort of like a two or three times a week mini mini cast, uh, just me, literally just the ramblings of a thirty-something nerd trying to you know make sense of stuff. So that'll be more personal. Um, yeah, more of a plug. I'm trying to work out what to call it because it's plug. not it's a plug. A plug. Yeah, a plug. A, a podcast plug. log. A, plug. a yeah. podcast log. Yeah. So I was going with slog. A sound log. A sound log. Yeah, slog maybe. Because that's I also a pun. Because it's kind of be hard work to get through. But no, a plug. Yeah, a plug. A podcast log. Yeah, a plug. yeah. Okay, the nerd versus world plug. Yeah. There you go. Yes. Sweet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Why? It's basically like a vlog, but without the video, because I've done that and I hated it. Yeah. <laughs> So, so it's a plug. So it's, a log it's, a plug. it's a log. So yes, keep an eye out for Brendan's plug. <laughs> yeah, the nervous <laughs> plug will be coming soon. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Um, and it'll it'll keep the same sort of naming Monkey. scheme for the title, but it'll be titles of specific television show episodes rather than films. So yeah. Oh, that's my phone. It's saying the leash hurry is up now and... following you on Twitter. <laughs> Thank you, the leash. <laughs> there you go, special mention. Yeah, whoever you are. At the leash, well done. You're on the show. <laughs> cool. Oh, and yeah, more uh, cool. interviewee stuff coming out as well. So yeah, there's stuff. still got James Cosmo from the Sci-Fi Weekend. Oh, yes. We've got Jim Butcher. We've got Sean McGuire, uh, and then yeah, Ooh. a whole bunch of other stuff coming soon. So all the content in your face. Yeah, it wouldn't be in your face and your, your ears. Your ears. Yeah, and any other orifices we can get into. <laughs> the, uh, Hang on, the, the, you just switched places with Amy. Have you have you freaky fighting each other? What, no. What the fuck? He was trying to get you know. He was trying to leave me in somewhere. You know. Show. I bet he was. Yeah. Right. Okay. Was a little bit <laughs> premature. Yeah. Oh, it's all going to carry on. <laughs> <laughs> so let's wrap up quickly. <laughs> uh, yes, let's. <laughs> so yes, yeah. front makes for a tight fit. That's all for this episode. Um, <laughs> thank you all very much for listening. I've been Brendan. I've been Spindles. And I've been Aidy. And until next time, take care and be excellent to each other.